This week's podcast is a little bit different. We're taking it back to when I was on the Godly Dating One-on-One podcast. Now, this was an interesting podcast because it was somewhat addressing a viral TikTok that we had where people didn't like some things that I said about our relationship and how we started. But then it really went into how do you start dating somebody that you may not find interesting at first? Like, it wasn't love at first sight. How do you make that work? Right. So, get ready. Buckle up. This is going to be a phenomenal episode. You mentioned that you were friends with your wife for a while, over a year. So what was it, how was your relationship with her um, during that season when you weren't, you know, you weren't checking for her? You guys are just friends. Tell us a little bit about um, your connection to your wife. Yeah. So that TikTok that you're talking about, oh my God, the, where I went wrong was I said in the TikTok, I gave my wife a chance and some women just did not rock with that. And the, I think what got missed is one, I tried to cover myself, bro. I said, <laughs> I said my wife wasn't interested in me either. But they just disregarded that. They just disregarded that. Uh, But I think what people missed was that I was talking about before we started dating. So I wasn't talking about once we actually started dating, once I decided to pursue her. But it was more so in that friendship stage because we knew each other for a little over a year before we started dating. And what happened was we served at the same church. We actually worked together at a college job. And I was seeing her just more as a friend. It wasn't even that she wasn't attractive or that I didn't think she would be a good fit for me. It just, you know how you have those relationships where it just starts off as a friend and you never see it going anywhere further than that. So that's really how that all started. So you say that's how that started. And I get that. I understand it. You know, I think a lot of people have been in those shoes. But when you made that video, a lot of people got the impression that you're saying, well, you see a woman, you guys are at the same church together, a year and a half goes by. If you aren't interested in sis for a year and a half, then clearly you're not interested in her. So what was it that may have sparked that, you know, that moment for you to say, well, maybe that's the woman for me? Yeah, that's a great question. And first of all, a lot of people don't realize that we don't know what we want a lot of times. We may think we know what we want, but sometimes we don't. And I think for me, I was, I wasn't looking at her because I was thinking about, other things like I was I don't know about you but there's so many things that come on Instagram or YouTube and and it's like wow like well maybe I could have this type of person or maybe I could have that and so many people live in a fantasy land and it wasn't that Pauline wasn't great it was more so that I was thinking that someone better may come and Mm. and it got to a point where if you know the verse where it talks about farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant (laughs) when they never see their harvest because of that And there's so many men and women out here who may be looking for someone better that really is a fantasy. And that's causing them to miss out on a great opportunity. Let's let's talk about, he said, some of you fellas are living in fantasy land. All right, so, and, and bear in mind, He'll tell. He'll be the first one to tell you he has a beautiful family. They have their. They have their first child. So I know you're not saying this as a guy who settled, you know. But my thing is, explain to us why you believe like people are in a fantasy land. And I say that because man, I really just had a guest recently, and I was telling them, I think a lot of women they'll settle for a guy because they feel as though it's not that many guys in the church. But I feel like there are a lot of men who never settle. For women, they're like, no, she has to have this standard, that standard. And 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 bear in mind, I'm talking to the fellas right now because y'all need Thank to get you. put in check. Uh, but <laughs> I think a lot of times we get that impression that sis just to have, and, and I'm not saying God wants you to marry somebody you're not attracted to. We're not, we're, I'm not, at least I'm not saying that. Tim, you can I'm not saying that. But, you know, why do you think we live in such a fantasy land? What do you think is the, the huge problem that's causing us men to, to think this way? Yeah. And like you said, I think my wife is beautiful and I'm very, very happy. But I think social media definitely has played a part in that. And even probably before social media with magazines and TV shows and things like that, we think that these airbrushed pictures and photos is what real life is. And then going away from that even further, sometimes for men, how women may dress, like if if there's a certain style that a guy likes, they may get too caught up in that. I talk to men all the time where they're like, man, I don't really like the way she dresses. It's like, bro, that can change. Like that is so <laughs> minuscule. And then I think we also if focus- I, If I cut much. you off, are you going to remember that thought? Yeah, let's go. Okay. So you said a lot of times we're thrown off by the way a woman dresses. So do you believe that that is proof that attraction grows? Mm. And, and I say that because a lot of people, let's, and please keep your thought. I know I cut you off, but please keep that thought. 
a lot of people they criticize the the relationships like Russell Wilson and Sierra. Mm. Any guy with a brain cell can look at Russell Wilson and say, "Okay, well he does come across a little bit nerdish, cornballish." Hey, yeah, we all get that, but it's it's him. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, and that's what I love about him because it's not a matter of I need to be a tough guy in order to be a real man. I think society has made us think we have to put on a certain type of facade in order to be accepted. And it's like, nah, be you and you'll find who God has for you. But we realize since marrying Sierra, bro, bro style <laughs> has been next level. Like he went Absolutely. from Hawaii beach shirts, you know, to <laughs> the smoothest thing you ever find. And, and that shows yeah. you the power of the right relationship. Cause they upgrade you. It's not. A, mm. It wasn't even about money. Russell was a millionaire before this woman, and we thought he was a loser. But he <laughs> married this woman, who made him turn into like you know he's swag. He's you know. And bear in mind, I, and I'm not one of those people who try to bash people like Russ on the internet, because people look at me like, man, he ain't a typical black dude. Like, cause I I try to carry myself articulate. I don't try to. I'm from the hood, but I don't act like it. You know what I mean? You would right. never know unless you knew me growing up. So I don't try to criticize those guys, but. Does that show you that attraction grows and that if you're with the right guy, you're with the right girl, they can help you upgrade in certain areas? Absolutely. I definitely believe attraction is something that can grow. And we all know it to be true because yeah. even if you think somebody is the best looking in the world, once you actually start getting to know them, what do you say? You said, man, I'm falling more in love for this guy. Or mm -hmm. vice versa, if you think someone is the baddest, the hottest, whatever, and you start getting to know them and you're like, mm, their attitude is stank. Now, all of a sudden, you don't think they're attractive. Y'all heard that? Because fine <laughs> people can get on your nerves. Fine people could not be spiritual. Go they could be gorgeous and be the most, the biggest headache you've ever experienced in your life. But as you are, Tim. No, I mean, that really is what it is. And I think one thing you mentioned, your style, your swag, like that's something that can change. And what yeah. I was going to say before uh, you had jumped in was that we forget that the point of marriage is not just someone that looks great. Like, yes, that's absolutely yeah. necessary. Yes, we absolutely want that. But at the same time, marriage is to glorify God, is to represent what it looks like for Jesus to be in a relationship with his church. And I think yeah. we forget that marriage should be about us finding somebody that's suitable for us. Ooh. You know, you, you hear all the time people talking about compatibility. Is this yeah. person compatible? And like, that is important to some degree. Chemistry yeah. has a place, but yeah. that should not be the foundation. We should be looking for, is this person suitable? Which just means, are they going to help me grow and reach the places that God has called me to? And I think when we look at that, and that's what helped me with mm -hmm. my wife, people ask me all the time, like, how did you know she was the one? And I'm not somebody that necessarily subscribed to, oh, there's one person in the world because that's just a lot of pressure. And that's another thing we can talk about is like taking the pressure off dating. But how I knew my wife was the one for me, before we even started dating, I knew that she potentially could be the one. And what I mean by that is that I knew that she had the qualities and the traits of a woman I needed to help me become the best version of myself. I knew I needed somebody that wasn't going to be a pushover, someone that was just as ambitious, just as much in love with God as I was, mm -hmm. because I knew that would bring the best out of me. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, <laughs> it does. It does perfectly. Like the, the way you ended it was going to be my next question, because I think a lot of times we find ourselves in the shoes that you were in, um, whereas we see handsome guy, attractive woman, yeah, but, you know, that's just a homie. You know, I'm not looking at it any type of way. So my, my question was really going to be like, what was the, I don't want to say like the light switch, you know, what was that light bulb moment? Because you, tar you, you mentioned, you know, you saw those traits that you wanted in a wife. But my thing is, it's not like she got those traits overnight. It's not like you just noticed it. So was it, is it, let me, I'm trying to, ref I'm trying to phrase it properly. Yeah, I think I got believe, you. Yeah, do you believe it was something that switched in you that made you realize that I have the wrong perspective? Or was it something about her that you're now I was just looking at it like, man, I was I never noticed that. So what was that what was that moment that made you realize this is an amazing woman that I was overlooking this whole time? Like how did you get that thought process to pursue after her? Yeah. So there's a couple things. One, I just matured and I grew. So when we first met, I had just got saved. You know, when you first get saved, you don't really know much of anything. You're still trying to figure everything out. I didn't really know who myself, who I was. I didn't know my identity in Christ that well. So over time, as I learned those things, as I matured and grew, I had a better picture of what I actually needed. And then also, there, was, my best friend actually was telling me like, hey, you should consider Pauline. And that's part of the confirmation is 
a lot mm -hmm. of people get suggestions, whether it be men or women. A lot of people get suggestions on people they should consider dating, but they automatically turn it down for whatever reason because either the person doesn't dress the way they want or they may not be as attractive or they're not funny, whatever it is. And it took me taking it to God after a while. Like I, I was hard headed at first. Like he kept saying like, you should look into it. You should look into it. After a while, I took it to God. I was like, Lord, if this is somebody you want me to consider, I need you to show me. Uh, and I think if we, more people did that, cause this is godly dating one-on-one. Like this is, mm. this is what we do. If we actually involve God in every step of the process, right. not just once we're dating, but also beforehand, like, Lord, yeah. is this somebody? Cause off, we, we could go somewhere. Go. People just think like, oh, like they're attractive. I should date them. It's like, whoa, that is no, like not necessarily like, True. what did the Lord tell you to do about this? Like right. let him guide our steps. Cause the word says that he's a light to our feet, a lamp to our path. Like sometimes we forget that he can really guide us and help us make better decisions. Yeah, bro. And, and that's so true. Like, I, I love the fact that you mentioned that someone told you, um, and I guess we could kind of take that two routes because there are some people that feel as though there's some singles that get tired of us married folks. Hey, you should talk to them. You should talk to them. Cause I hated it. Cause I felt like y'all were just suggesting every single human being. in there. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I know you don't think we're compatible. You just know she's single and you know Tamara's single. So I know we we frustrate them. But what do you say about, like, or would you say you're thankful for the voices in your life that would, would like, tell you? Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I definitely know singles right now who go through that as well. Like, people just throwing every name. It's like, bro, you know this ain't it. Like, you know this, this isn't it. Uh, and I definitely have empathy for somebody in that situation. Um... But again, if it's somebody that hopefully you have people in your life that you trust that aren't giving you the oversaturation of a lot of ideas. And like maybe there's one or two people in your life where they really only come to you when it's truly a quality candidate. I think that's somebody that you can more so listen to than somebody that's just saying anytime a new person walks through the church, they're telling you to engage them and, and look into them. So I think that's the difference is knowing who's telling you and who's speaking into your life. If it's somebody you really trust and value, it's something you should consider. Now I want to ask you this, because you're saying we have to be careful. You're saying that, you know, there, there's people that you can receive from, people that you shouldn't receive from. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, too many of us, we listen to everybody. Mm -hmm. We listen to everybody with a position. We listen to everybody that we love, they're our friends, and all those things. What are some key tips that you could say that you know I should listen to that dude when he suggests someone to me, or I should listen to that woman when he suggests someone to me? Because we all know people that love us, they do want what's best for us. But how do you determine if this person is just throwing a random body out there? And how do you determine if they're actually saying something that could be God's will? Because if we're attracted to them, we're going to assume it's God's will. You know what I mean? So, so <laughs> yeah. how do you determine that? Like, how do, how do you go about doing that? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think there's a couple of ways you can go about it. One is looking at the fruit in their life. Mm -hmm. Like, are they somebody that you know hears from God? Like, you've heard them say, God told me this, and then you've seen God move in that situation. And that's just in general, not just with picking a spouse, but anytime somebody gives you an idea or a thought like do you know if they hear from god for themselves because that's crucial uh number two i think history comes into play because a lot of people they, their parents like i know people whose parents just be suggested anybody yeah. uh and they just they just want a grandbaby they just desperate for a grandbaby and that's why i think when someone comes to you what suggestions have they given you in the past have they given you any uh because you can automatically know if someone continually is sending you the wrong people, then you know just to ignore them. But if this may be the first time that somebody suggests something to you, and this is somebody you respect and you feel like they know how to make good decisions, I think taking their advice and then taking it to God on your own. Because we're not saying that somebody should tell you something and that you should go out with somebody just off of that. But it's more so you've got a suggestion from somebody you respect, somebody you've seen fruit in their life, and you take it to God and say, God, should it be something I consider? And here's where I think people get mixed up is that they think just because you consider something means that you have to marry them. And it's like, no, like there's a big difference between considering somebody being open to getting to know them and then walking down the aisle. Because when you get to know, you can get to know somebody without them even knowing that you like them. Like there's this whole concept that my pastor has called spying out the land where you're getting intel. And this really works, obviously, in a church context when you're around them. Uh, sometimes that doesn't work out with online dating. But if you have the ability to get to know them, get to know their character, how do they treat people they don't need? Like, how do they treat their friends? If you can figure that stuff out before they know you like them, you're really in a good position. 
Yeah, and that's so good. And I, and I think that, that, that brings me to a point that I think we need to hear is the fact that we have a huge issue in today's generation where no one wants to be friends. Everybody just wants to be married. And it's like there's so many married people that don't like their spouse. You know, they, they love them. You know, we got married, but there was no connection prior to that. You know what I mean? And what, what, you, what you just said that you learned from your pastor about spying out the land. And obviously, like you said, online people, you know, these COVID era that we in, it's hard to just get to see people all the time. So we get that. But that's the reason why I'm always key on getting to know people. You don't know if you want to date somebody the first time you see them. You know if they fine. You know if he's the <laughs> best looking thing you've seen in this city. You know that. That does not mean you know any of the any of the fruit they produce. And that's where we go wrong. You know, and you know, it's good that it worked out for you that you were able to see your wife for well over a year, build a friendship. And a lot of people thought, my wife and I, we rushed our, our dating relationship um, before engagement because we we were only dating for like six, seven months officially while we were dating, but we knew each other for five years prior to that. So it made that transition easier. You know what I mean? Yeah. But a lot of people they they just Oh, I just, I, when you know, you know, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. that's not, that's not always the case. Sometimes you're, you're rushing it a bit. So when it comes to you receiving that confirmation or any of that thing, how did you take that step? You know, because I, I think a lot of people, they may be where you are, you know what I mean? But they may find it difficult. Like I friend zone this girl, I friend zone this guy, but now I'm kind of seeing some traits that I, I would like, you know, but it's like, I don't want to ruin the friendship because I've heard a lot of people say, that. I don't want to ruin my friendship by trying to take it a step further. Um, so what do you say to a guy that wants to take it a step further? What do you say to a woman who she realizes her single guy friend is somebody she's looking at? Like, I would want to, you know, pursue that. How do they take that next step? How do they make their intentions known? Yeah, great question. One of the first things that came to my mind is the verse that talks about we don't we're not led by a spirit of fear, but mm -hmm. by peace, love, sound mind. And I think sometimes when we're afraid to not want to mess up the relationship, there can be some wisdom there. But at the same time, we have to check our motives. Like, is this more fear based or is this me really trying to be wise? I think when you can figure that out, that helps. And then as far as how did I go from being in the friend zone to not, it's funny because like five or six months before me and my wife actually started dating, we were clearly in the friend zone. I actually had a conversation with her. No, seriously, I, I had a conversation with her where I told her, I feel like she thinks she's a big sister to me and how that kind of blew me. Now, let me tell you why. So she's a year older than me. And like, I understand why she could, may have felt that way because she was a leader at church and like I was on her team and, and leader at my job and I was under her there. So like, I get it. But like, you only a year older. Like, let's just chill out a little bit. <laughs> let's just calm down. And I told her, and I, it wasn't because I liked her at the time because I didn't, but I was just like, where is this coming from? Yeah. But all that to say, I, we went from there, from brother, sister, that's worse than friend zone. Like once you start calling brother in Christ, like it's just, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> so we went from there to dating and really what changed one, God definitely has some moments where he allowed us to be in the same places and get to know each other even better. But I think us just having natural conversations, I think, and, and just in general in society, we've lost the ability to have conversations. Mm -hmm. So Pauline and I would begin, that's my wife's name, we would begin to just start talking a little bit more after a church, or we would just talk a little bit after a worship service or whatever. And those conversations were low pressure. It wasn't anything deep, but it was just me intentionally going out of my way to talk to them, to like get to know her a little bit. And that really helped because I was able to start seeing sides of her and I'm like, oh man, she is really cool. And same for her. Like she was able to see like, oh, he is this or he is that. He's different than what I thought. And I think just those conversations can be helpful. Yeah, so so I wanna, I wanna so it's good that you brought it there because I wanna wheel it to where we were in the beginning. I have a friend, he's listening and he knows okay. I'm talking about him. <laughs> I have a friend that every woman that I think that is a good looking young lady, she's spiritual, she's mature, I'm forwarding her to your DM. You <laughs> will follow this girl and you will DM her. Like that, I don't care if she shuts you down. You need to shoot your shot, bro. You know, so I, I'm that I'm that annoying friend that wants to see my friends get married. At least the ones who want to get married, I'm gonna try to shoot shoot you that lob, you know? Right. Go ahead and go ahead and get the alley hoop. But my thing is, there's been plenty of times where, like, his response went back to me. And sorry, I put you on the spot. You know, you know, only you know who I'm talking to. Uh, but 
they're looking at it like, oh, no, we're just friends. What is it? Um, I don't know. You were in that shoe. Did you have a friend at that time who would, who would tell you stuff and you're just looking at it like, nah. And it's not even a matter of me coming at it from an unspiritual perspective. I just want to know, like, for us who are on the outside, who are trying to help you guys get married, do you believe that some people are too stuck on, like, a certain type? Because bear in mind, I don't believe in, you know, if you like tall, God is going to send a midget. If you like fat, God is going to send him skinny. I don't think that's how God operates. But at the same time, do you think it's our type that's paralyzing us? Like, because I honestly think that's the case for some people. I think your type can definitely paralyze you. I'm not against, it, like, having no type at all. Like, that's fine if you have a certain look. But I think when you are more focused on your type, then especially when it's just on like physical stuff when you're more focused on that then going back to what i was talking about with the suitability then focused on what's the type of person what's the character of a person that will help you thrive in marriage because no one wants to be the couple that's cute together and then gets divorced five years later like that's not what we want we want to make sure that we are with somebody that we can build a life with yeah. and i think focusing on that can definitely help the, the type thing is tough because sometimes people say they're looking for a certain type and that's what's holding them back. But really what's holding them back is emotional bondage from their past. So whether it be from a past breakup, whether it be from their parents' failed marriage, whether it be because they didn't know one of their parents, I think sometimes that's holding people back from making a commitment and they're just hiding behind the thing of, oh, well, this isn't my type. And it's really, I don't really want to get into a serious relationship because then I'm going to have to deal with my past and my trauma. And a lot of people don't want to deal with that. All right, so what I'll ask you is, for those people who will say, you know what, Tavares made some points. Tim is a perfect example. It worked out for him. He's happily married. Okay, but how do I know if I'm settling? Because I'm willing to take that advice. And he says he didn't settle. But, how do, but inside of me, deep down, I feel like I'm settling if I do that. How do they know the difference between settling and realizing that God could have had something for you that you just weren't expecting? So what are, what are some signs that you could say that they should pay attention to, um, you know, or you know how you mentioned because you were focused on suitability, you know, so talk a little bit about that. How do they know when it's a matter of purpose driven and it's not a matter of loneliness made this? Mm. Yeah, that's good. And I think the answer is going to vary for, for different people. Like what's settling for me is going to be different for what's settling for somebody else. But I think in general, and that's why I'll just go back to this whole idea of the confirmation is because the reason I love it is because there's safety in it to me. Because if I'm getting an idea and I'm taking it to God and saying, is this somebody I should consider? If I have peace from the Lord, for me, that's good enough for me to feel like I'm not settling because I trust that God has my best interest at heart. So if he's telling me that this is somebody I can move forward with, to me, that gives me peace that, hey, this this is not settling. This is somebody that may be able to help me accomplish all that I have. Now, from a looks perspective, like if you look at this person and it's making you cry or or here's a test people say, like if you think about your kids, if you would be scared or afraid for your kids to look like them, they're like, that may not, that may not, like I've heard people stories, unfortunately. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard stories, bro, of people crying when they delivered their baby because it looked like their spouse. Like I've heard that. So don't put yourself in that position. Yeah. But if you're not there, then yes, absolutely uh, be open. All right, so break down the confirmation because I know a little bit about it, but I'm going to have a, a link to this. There, there's a great resource he created for gentlemen, him and his wife created for the ladies. You know, So break down a little bit about those for the ladies and the guys who are single and they're, they're, they want to try this out, but they just want a little bit of a push or like a step-by-step -step guide. So break that down for us. Yeah, so... The confirmation ebook that you mentioned is absolutely free. So definitely, if it interests you, check it out. And the whole point of it is what we've been talking about this whole episode. It's getting suggestions because this is the reason I created the confirmation is because I talk to a lot of single men in the church. And a lot of them sometimes feel overwhelmed by all the options. Because unfortunately, you know, there's a lot more single women in the church than there is single men for in yeah. most cases. Right. And because of that, it can be super overwhelming and almost uh, can be debilitating for a man not to want to move forward because they don't want to start getting that player tag. Uh, well, he talked to this person and this person and this person, and that can kind of paralyze them. So one of the things that the confirmation does is you're getting suggestions that you're already getting. You're already getting these suggestions. And then you're literally just 
if you're open to them, if they don't make you want to throw up, like if you're open to them, mm -hmm. taking that to God and then praying about, is this my next step? And, and here's the thing that I really want to share. I mentioned it earlier, but getting clarity to move forward on somebody is not marrying them. And the reason why I love the next step piece is because the Bible says the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of our lives. And sometimes we think when it comes to dating that God may not care about it or when it comes to choosing who we want to pick that God doesn't care. But the Bible says that God actually delights. He gets pleasure in the details of our lives and he cares about the steps that we're taking. So when you just take a step to me, there's a lot of, of peace and freedom in that knowing that God is with me. He's not just right. with me in my salvation. He's with me in every area of my life. Yeah, bro. That's so good because I feel as though a lot of people think God is worried about seeing you at church, seeing you at the altar call. How, how often did you read? How often did you pray? But outside of following Jesus, the greatest decision or the worst decision you can ever make is the person you marry. You know, so that's that's something that we need to understand that God is concerned about. So I'll give you the last word, bro. What is it? And and if it wasn't going to be about this, I still want you to say something in regards to the people who are in fantasy land. Oh, mm. nah, I'm not dating him. He's too short. He's too tall. He's too this. He's too that. She's too this. She's too that. She's not enough. She doesn't have for the people who are in fantasy land. And whatever you want to say to the listeners today, just go ahead and give us the last word, bro. Yeah. For people in fantasy land, I would say, ask yourself why you're not interested in the certain people that you're saying you're not interested in. Is it because you already said no to them in the past and you're being stubborn, for lack of a better word, and you're like, look, I already said no, I'm not going back on it. Or is it because they're really just not a viable option for you? And one of the ways you can know is you're in fantasy land, especially if you're getting a lot of recommendations about this person. Like, is this somebody that truly would be a good fit for you? You know they're attractive. So here's the thing. You, you don't have any really red flags about them. It's not that they're not good looking. It's not that they're not smart or whatever. It's just that, oh, well, well maybe it could be a little better. That's really what I'm yeah. talking about is when you're just constantly saying, well, maybe this could be better. Or maybe you're always finding little nitpicking things. It's not yeah. anything that's really substantial. I think that is when you know for sure that, okay, you're in fantasy land and looking for something better for whatever reason, whether you don't want to commit or because you just really think that the perfect person is out there, which nobody is perfect. Like yeah. no one is perfect. So I think that will help. And then as far as the final word, I would just say, I just want people to take the pressure off of dating. I know so many people, dating can be such a, a pressurized situation. And like you said, Demars, it absolutely is the second most important decision you make. So there is some weight to it. But I think sometimes we put so much pressure on talking to somebody, yeah. not even yeah. dating, not even once we're in a relationship. <laughs> yeah. I'm just talking about just actually talking to somebody because we're like, well, if I talk to them, they have to be the person I'm married. It's like, no, no, no. Like, please right. just get be more open to getting to know people, putting yourselves in situations where you're meeting people, where you're talking to people, and then being open to those people actually being viable options for you to marry. Right. Because then once you actually start talking to them and getting to know them, it'll be very clear if this person is somebody that is good for you or not. Thanks for watching this video. To get more Christian relationship advice, subscribe to our channel. And make sure you check out our other videos as well.